Karen warned me, bringing everybody back together. But great to share, um, and uh, again, just to get us thinking, uh, when we think about gratitude, um, there are so many people us, around us that we don't always think, oh, we are grateful. Some of us are better than others. Um, I, I wanted to go back to the last time I was with you a little bit. One of the things we talked about on our spiritual journey of what we carry, don't carry, is um, I questioned whether or not the universe, the universe, you know, that big thing, really cares about us, you know, on the earth. And um, afterwards, Peggy Tilly was talking to me, and she said, you know, I really do believe that the universe does care. And we talked about it a little bit, and I said, you know, I, I had to agree with her. You know, we talked about the fact that we were created by the universe, we're here because of the universe, so we're part of that universe, and if we care about ourselves, the universe is caring through us. So I really enjoyed that conversation to show that how we collectively come to think about things and find new meaning. So thank you, Peggy. Today I want to talk about another gift from the universe, gratitude. This is a wonderful gift. It's not just an emotion or an expression of thankfulness, but it's really an intentional acknowledgement of our present reality. And to be grateful sometimes in spite of that reality. Um, to be grateful to life no matter what the circumstances. Are our eyes and mind open to see gratitude in everything? And one of the conversations Callie and I were having uh, yesterday was not necessarily gratitude for everything, gratitude in everything, a big difference in the word. For example, in pain, sorrow, desolation, and destruction, our responsive reading this morning talks about this paradox. Gratitude is an instrument. It's an instrument that can change the negative energy into positive energy a difficult time into a learning experience. It is powerful, and although we are not all mystics in this room, we can appreciate the transcendent power that gratitude can give us. We need to embrace it, and to be really grateful in all things, not for all things, I believe that for Unitarian Universalists, there are three elements to gratitude. Attitude, action, and faith. You probably already know Nietzsche's saying, paraphrased, whatever doesn't kill you will make you stronger. Well, I remember one time, a few years ago, at wrestling practice, one of my students, Baylin's brother, as a matter of fact, um, responded, well, coach, you know, it may not kill you, but you know, if you lose an arm or a leg, you may not be stronger either. <laughs> well, you have to love those students that teach the teacher a lesson, right? Um, so, how does gratitude help us become stronger, more resilient, more appreciative? When we go through the hard times, any hard time, we enter a grief process. I think gratitude actually holds a place in each phase of that grief process that helps us get through. When I officiate at a funeral, one of the things that I reflect on is that as we remember a loved one who has died, we lean into gratitude for their life and their influence on us, but at the moment, we're standing in grief at their loss. And so it's the leaning into gratitude that gives us hope that we will get through the loss. The intentionality is to literally be grateful in the sense that you say it before you feel it and you believe it before it comes true. As you go through the phases of grief, you will still feel the sting, anger, denial, bargaining, depression, all those phases. And if you put gratitude and embed it in each one of those phases, the gratitude wraps you and helps you to get through the next phase. Now, in the middle of turmoil, pain, and discomfort, we understand gratitude is difficult, to say the least. 
as Unitarian Universalists, we're empathetic to the world around us. As Karen mentioned in our joys and sorrows, we need to look no further than the recent killings in Maine and right here at home, the war in Ukraine and Israel, the assault in Florida on gay, lesbian, and transgender rights, on blacks and immigrants, and we can honestly ask ourselves, now remind me, what exactly are we grateful for? <laughs> I don't think pain and suffering is something we should uplift as a goal to have. What I do think is, as Unitarian Universalists, we have centuries of experience of conflict and suffering. We've experienced them as a heretical religion for many. We've experienced them in our quest for social justice. We've experienced them in our fight that we can love who we want to love. So both in the natural order of the world and in human made existence, we understand those issues. And gratitude for us comes in knowing that growth, learning, and betterment will come out of our experiences. Epictetus, the Greek philosopher wrote, it's easy to praise providence for anything that may happen if you have two qualities, a complete view of what has actually happened in each instance, what we would call awareness, and a sense of gratitude. Without gratitude, what is the point of seeing? And without seeing, what is the object of gratitude? End of quote. In his commentary on this quote, Ryan Holiday says, something's happened that we wish had not. Which of these is easiest to change? Our opinion or the event that has passed? <laughs> Accepting what has happened is called in Stoicism the art of acquiescence. This doesn't mean to just accept hardship, but it does mean to see the bigger picture. What is in our control? What battles do you or I need to fight? Which do we let go of? And the Stoics would argue not, to ex not just to accept, but be grateful for what comes to you. Centuries later, Nietzsche expressed this idea, amor fate, which means a love of fate. So acceptance is the first step to gratitude. The second step is action. Our attitude of action must take place in order for it to take hold. And again, physical pain makes this very difficult. How many of us would survive almost two decades of prison isolation and torture that Nelson Mandela went through? And yet, he expressed his gratitude of life every day through respect, hope, and self-care, all actions that did not go unnoticed by the wardens that guarded him. Do we have perseverance to stay the course? Are we willing to get up every day even when those days are difficult? We may have been ill, we may have lost a spouse or a loved one, this is real grief. But are we willing to lean into gratitude knowing we will grow, learn, and be better? The best example perhaps we can learn from is from a loved one in the dying process, one who has reached a moment of acceptance in the ultimate fate that comes to each and every one of us and shows gratitude to those around them and to the life they were given even as it ends in the way as we know it. And this leads us to faith, faith. As Unitarian Universalists, we act out our faith in this world. We truly believe we can make the world a better place, more equitable, more respectful, more sustainable, more loving. We also know there are strong currents that are working against us, political, economic, religious, and social, that fight us and our faith that real justice can happen. Now, I don't want to be Pollyanna. Whatever our personal faith belief is, I remember hearing in the past, 
you're suffering now, but in the next life, you'll be fine. Well, that may be true, if you believe in reincarnation or an afterlife from this one. But you know, for me as a Unitarian Universalist, I believe that this life counts. And to paraphrase from Christian teachings, I believe that the kingdom of God is actually in the here and now. And that's why we're here. So for me, this is where my faith lives in my life and in this world. And to be transcendent and understand that gratitude will help me in those rough times. And the universe sometimes has to take care of itself. Sometimes we can only take care of ourselves. And we start there. So first, our attitude next to our action and our faith. I want to give you an example. This past summer, we'll start, Crystal, we can start a video. I had so much to be grateful for. We went to our nephew's wedding, and it was in California. And we're on the Pacific Ocean, and it's beautiful. This is uh, Shark's Tooth Cove. It's a beautiful area. You, you walk down this steep hill, you go to it, and then Kelly and I were enjoying the view. Let's see if we can get the next slide. And as we're enjoying this beautiful view, we then walk up the hill. But before we do so, in gratitude, um, we made a little rock formation that you guys will recognize. And that was kind of our gratitude of where we were. Now, we walked up the hill, and guess what we found? So. Our car's window had been smashed up there, and not, we weren't the only one. And um, you know, that changes your attitude a little bit, doesn't it? <laughs> a little less grateful for that wonderful spot on the Pacific. And as everybody said, a little less grateful for all those people that come down from the Bay Area and do this to us. <laughs> I laughed about it. It's like, I guess everybody just comes down from the Bay Area and smashes windows. But um, first, our attitude. We could do nothing about what happened, right? It happened. We also said it could have been much worse. They took Kelly's bag, which had her medicine in it, so that was bad, but they didn't take anything else. We didn't get hurt. We could drive the car. Now, the couple next to us that had their windows smashed, they lost their passports, their wallets, and they didn't speak English. So they were going to have it much worse than us. We, we knew that. The second thing is we needed action. We had to call the rental company. We had to call Walgreens, call Kelly's doctor, get the prescriptions renewed. And we were an hour from Walgreens. We were an hour from the airport. And we had to get all that done. And we were only 30 minutes from the wedding reception that night, OK? So that 30 minutes, right, because it's going to become three hours. All right, third, what was our faith? What did we trust in? We had to trust that the reality is we did not control this process. We may not make it. We'll make it to the wedding. That was the next day. We may not make it to the reception. But we figured it's going to work out. And honestly, everybody was great, from the pharmacists to the rental car people. They were these hidden people to be grateful for, right? And we arrived at my nephew's reception, 10 minutes to spare. So go figure, right? So gratitude was a gift we gave to ourselves each step of the way. Even when we didn't feel it at first, we leaned into it. And I wanted to invite two people to share their experience of gratitude. Um, my friend, Belen Bonaparte. And first, I'm going to invite our one and only wonderful Karen Kempf. Okay, several years ago, I decided to start a gratitude, jar, a gratitude jar. I had tried the journaling in the evening, listing three things each day you were grateful for, and for me, I felt like a terrible, mundane failure. I am grateful for my health. I am grateful for my friends. I am grateful for my dog. I'm grateful for my book club. I'm grateful for my, I'm grateful that I got out of bed this morning. I'm grateful that I have clean sheets. I was really thankful for that. All true, but at 10 o'clock at night, I didn't feel very creative, reflective, or thankful on a mission of remembering 
being grateful for the previous 16 hours. So I figured a gratitude jar might be easier. So I rinsed out a spaghetti jar, <laughs> cut up slips of paper and put it on my altar as a morning or any time of day practice. So I'd slip in a slip of paper with an occurring bit of gratitude, thankfulness throughout the day. And it worked. Catching myself in the moment of gratitude was much easier for me than trying to recapture the feeling of thankfulness hours later when I was tired. I always had at least one thing to be grateful for each day, and I would catch and surprise myself more than once. Ah, there is something I'm really grateful for. I also gave myself permission to repeat myself, things I'm especially grateful for every day, and to express gratitudes for things that I am still working on, like my bad knees, which were failing, but it served me so well for over 65 years. So while my journal did not fill up, my jar did, and it served its purpose. I filled myself with gratitude, and I found myself expressing gratitude more often to others as well. Once my jar was full, I left it full on my altar to remind me of all the things that in my life that I had been grateful for. And then at the end of last year, I decided to empty my jar out and read through all the slips of paper and count my many blessings. I sorted them as I went, things still actively heartfully grateful for, and things not as important and no longer meaningful. I found that I still had lots to be grateful for. I stuffed those back in the bottle and cut up some more slips. I can always slip in another piece of gratitude to my jar. The joy of being grateful is ever growing, is an ever growing presence in my life. The practice of gratitude awareness is a jar and a slip of paper away. Plus, when I'm feeling down or frustrated, I can go over and pull out a slip, and it brings a smile and a remembrance that every day is a gift. Gratitude is a gift that fills the heart with joy. Here's a quote, quote from Arena Huffington I'd like to share with you. Living in the state of gratitude is the gateway to grace. Living in the state of gratitude is a gateway to grace, and so it is. Peter, and now we're gonna wel welcome Balin up to share her story of gratitude. Thank you, everyone. Um, I would first like to thank Peter and Kelly for just being a part of my life. And I'd like to thank my brother for being here. And um, I, this is my first time sharing my story in front of a large group of people. And I think this moment because um, I have been working on my vulnerability, so. <laughs> what a way to start. So um, I, two years ago, I had a cancer scare that had me um, think about if I'll ever be able to bear children. That's huge for someone who, you know, early 20s, so 24. Um, so with that moment, I had to take action to say, okay, this is a situation that I have. How do I change it? I can't change it, other than me making sure that I do the things that I need to. So it created a sense of gratitude for me in the trying times of me not knowing what to do in the situation for me to change my life and to create discipline for myself that I never had to see the resilience that I have now that I never knew, and to know that I can do all things because I have the power within me. Um, so with that being said, I was able to 
create a discipline for myself to change my life. And it caused me to have great news to know that the cancer scare uh, was benign and I was able to take all of the things that happened that caused me to say, why this? And with that being said, it helped me to know the power of why. And by me understanding the power of why, I was able to create the discipline that I did to change my narrative. And now that I know the power of why, I add that to my daily walk. And to know that everything I do has to have a why behind it. And even if I may not know the why now, I'm able to take the lesson and put it in somewhere else. And I, it was a saying um, by Nelson, he said that you never lose, you always have a lesson in everything that you go through. Um, so thank you, that is my story. Thank you both. And let's give another round for Karen and Baylan. Thank you very much. My little car window is pretty insignificant, right? Right? Um, but each one of us is ourselves. And again, the worst thing that we hear, oh, you think you got it bad. You should hear about so-and-so, They, you know, what they're going through. And so the fact of the matter is each one of our journeys is, is together. Individual, but we're also journeying together. So we want to be supportive of one another in this space, in our space, um, not just on Sunday, but through our time together. Um, what we learned today is, is, is this power of gratitude. And um, as we put it in intentional practice each day, I think each one of us could share a very similar, or share a story in a similar way. And so, you know, when we go to our closing song today, when we get that later on this morning, what I think is we can truly believe that in spite of all the difficulties and suffering, let us acknowledge and have faith in gratitude that this truly is a wonderful world. And if you don't know that, you just need to listen again to Anne, that we're gonna get the opportunity to do it really shortly. And then we know to be grateful for everything. Thank you. <laughs>